Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. In the Old Testament, the word favor appears with this definition, grace, charm, acceptance, goodwill, or desire. And I love this definition. This is a great definition. To bend or to condescend or stoop in kindness to an inferior. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't that great? Amen. In other words, God stoops to us as inferiors and pours out his blessing on us. Now, in the New Testament, we're more familiar with the, with the word favor than you think. It's from the Greek word charis, C-H-R-I-S, from which we get the word charismatic, charisma, all in that word of grace. It is where we get our word gifts of the Holy Spirit, charismata gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are a sign of God's favor. Wow, interesting. And the other New Testament meaning I think is so powerful, it is the divine influence upon the heart and how it reflects in us in our life. Let me say that again. The divine influence upon our hearts and how it affects us in our daily life. Amen. Do you get that? Yeah. If you do, say amen. amen. This also means that which affects joy, Pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, and loveliness. So every time you see somebody that acts like that, they are surrounded by favor. So favor is not only having a diamond ring or money in your pocket. Favor means that you become a nice person. God only knows that we need some nice people around the church. How many will you will agree with me, with me today? Uh, too many sour pusses around the church, too many people that don't know how to experience the joy of the Lord. It produces sweetness, charm, happiness, pleasure. Tap your neighbor and say, do you fit that category? I wonder if you fit that category. Come on, tell them something. It also means... Watch this. It also means grace of speech. In other words, how you talk reflects who you are. Wow. If you're cutting, mean, careless with your words, you ain't a grace person. That's right. That's right. See, we've got this whole idea that favor and grace only means money. And it does. And for those who fight against that, they just don't know their Bible. I heard Jerry Savelle say something because he's the, he's the most famous favor guy in the whole world. He really is. I heard him say something. He said, if you don't understand favor, you don't have a Bible. You just don't read it if you have it. Because every time you read this Bible, you'll find the favor of God, the grace of God exposed over and over again from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. And I agree with him. I agree with him 100%. Now, the point is that grace is more than just having things. Grace means that God has you. <laughs> and your whole definition of life changes. Your attitude of life changes. How you see things, how you relate to things, how you describe things, how you act by not only what you do, but how the things that come out of your mouth. Grace speaking. Do you speak grace over things, or do you bring condemnation over things by the words you say? I'm going to try that section over there. there, there, there. Come on now. Are you with me so far? Yes. So as we proceed today, I want you to understand that. This is more than just things. Now, 
One of the things that I like about this definition of favor is this. This is what we call the literal technical Greek definition. You ready for this? I guess you're not ready. It means to have the peculiar signature of God's favor or honor, honor or cherishing value placed on you so that when he sees you, he has special value for you and he does everything he can to move heaven and earth for your benefit. Oh, come on, man. <clears throat> I don't think you got that. Do you understand that when you get a revelation of the favor of God, God is actually moving heaven and earth around for your benefit? It's special treatment. Now, I, 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 want, I want to say something right here. Because I know something on the inside, and I want to move that blockage out of your life. You must never receive the Word of God based on where you presently are. How many understood what I just said? Okay, let, let me explain what I'm talking about. Can I explain what I'm talking about? How many of you right now in the natural, not seeing a whole lot of things that have to do with this favor stuff? Can you keep your hand up a little bit? Say, oh, I'm not making that bad confession. We're just clearing our souls. Come on. How many say, I, I believe in favor, but man, I ain't seeing nothing right now. Come on. How many, how many be honest to say that? Okay. Now, out of those of you that raised your hand and the many who didn't raise their hand because the spirit of lying came on them. How many of you know when you raised your hand, you weren't admitting that you were going to stay there? Right. You were declaring, this is where I presently am, but I'm not moved by what I see. Yeah. How many of you? Come on. Yeah, okay. So here's what you have to do when you receive this message. You have to wipe the slate clean out of your present circumstances, and you have to see yourself the way God sees you, no matter what you are experiencing right now in your natural. That's why we, 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 we quote 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, and the word sight there really is a a, 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 a subscribing to the flesh, the senses, what we see, what we feel, what, what we're experiencing right now. We're walking by what? Faith. Say it out loud. Faith. And not by what? Our, our, right, our senses. So God wants to move heaven and earth because he has placed a special value on you you are valuable and precious to your heavenly Father. <laughs> okay, we got to start all over again because you're all not getting this. I told you I want you to poke a few people. Come on, poke them. Poke somebody around you. Poke them. Come on. Come on, poke them. Say, I want you to know that you are special to God. You have special value. And he will move heaven and earth, if he has to, to bless you. Now, how many of you honestly believed that? Okay. All right. All right, as we proceed, we're going to find out. Here are four definitions of favor. You ready? Number one, kindness or graciousness. You are the object of God's affection, and he has given you his favor as a gift. Psalm 37 and 4 from the message says, keep company with God and get in on his best. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to what the King James Version says. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. I like the message version better. Get in with God, and he'll give you his best. 
It is God granting goodwill toward us or kindness. Are you ready? Number two, God bestowing his love on you as a token of his regard for you. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The message says, but God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him. Hey. So I, 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 I detest hearing somebody say, when I found the Lord, honey, he was not lost. You didn't find him. You weren't even looking for him. You were doing your thing, and somehow God supernaturally arrested you with what we call the divine love of God. He commended his love towards you. While you were unworthy, ugly, dirty, out there doing your thing, God was pursuing you, and he actually found you. You didn't find him. Glory to God. How much does God love you? How much do you believe God loves you? I mean, I don't like that. I like people. Come on, I like people to be active. So how much do you really believe God loves you? Ask him. Ask him. How much do you really believe God loves you? Now tell him this. Let me tell you how much I believe God loves me. Come on, tell him. You ready for this? I, I want to ask you again, are you ready for this? Yes. How about John 14 and 14? If you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Anything? Yes. Apparently, Somebody, when they wrote that, must have had too much wine. <laughs> if you'll ask anything. Now, now, I can hear the detectors in the crowd. Well, you know, you just can't ask God anything. I can't ask God for somebody else's wife. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, I'll try over here. <laughs> Bunch of dead beats over there today. Let's, let's see if I can get over here. This is you. You're usually really good with me, so I'll stay right next to you. Yeah, glory to God. So, you mean the, the Bible says if you ask anything, yes. Here's what the Bible says in John 15, that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask whatever you will and it'll be granted unto you. So, we understand that. We don't have to make excuses like some religious people do. We know that there's a boundary in the Word. We know there's certain things that are off limits. But let's get off of that and let's get on to the fact that he said, ask me for your new car. Ask me for your house. Ask me for the right kind of wife. Ask me for the right kind of husband. My God, I'm getting excited here. I'm trying to be calm. I got a whole long to go here. Well, I, I just don't know if I can do that. Oh, get on the back of the bus. So tired of religious people making excuses. You tell me you don't want something new? You're going to stand in front of me and lie through your white teeth and tell me you don't care about life. You, I don't know, I, why do you work then? That's right, why? That's right, why? <laughs> Crazy people. Why do you work? Yeah, right. Well, I need money. Right. How's about if you had a lot of money? Yeah. Anything wrong with that? No. Well, you know, you know, you know, Bible says, Money is the root of all evil. Uh -huh. You didn't read your Bible. Right. It does not say that. It says the love of money love is the root of all evil. Yes. Well, you know, people get destroyed with money. No, there's only one group of people that I could show you over and over again in the book of Proverbs. You know who gets destroyed with money? Fools. Right. I want to make this announcement today. 
I ain't no fool. Get over this money thing. People say, oh, well, praise the Lord, I'm not, I'm not going after money. You don't have to go after money. Money's coming after you because it's under the category of goodness and mercy. That what? That what? Oh, no, no. They follow me all the days of my life. All the days. That's 24-7. 